Okay, in our video series of ECG interpretation made easy by a six step method, in this video we are going to talk about our last step, the sixth step and the most important step ischemia and infarction assessment on ECG. Now, ischemia means blood flow obstruction. Whenever there is blood flow obstruction to the heart muscle, there are two types of ischemia that can take place in heart. One is transmural ischemia in which the whole wall, whole thickness of the wall of heart is affected. That is called as transmural ischemia. Or it can be a subendocardial ischemia. In subendocardial ischemia, the inner layer of the heart is affected. Now, how does transmural and subendocardial ischemia takes place? Now, basically, heart muscle is supplied by coronary vessels and coronary vessels supply the blood from outside towards inside of the heart muscle. Now, whenever there is obstruction of these coronary vessels, whenever these coronary vessel blood flow is blocked, the initial area that is affected will be the innermost area, the subendocardium, because subendocardium is receiving lesser blood supply as compared to the outer area. So, whenever there is blood flow obstruction of these coronary vessels, the subendocardium will be the tissue that will be affected first. And that is called as a subendocardial ischemia. And when ischemia is for a longer period of time, this inner side of the heart tissue will be dead. That is called as infarction, subendocardial infarction. Now, as the time progresses and there is complete obstruction of these coronary vessels, what will happen is that there will be complete ischemia of the whole thickness of the heart muscle. That is called as a transmural ischemia, in which the whole thickness of the heart muscle is affected. That is a transmural ischemia. Now, the purpose of understanding transmural ischemia and subendocardial ischemia is that there will be different presentation on ECG of subendocardial ischemia and there will be a different presentation of transmural ischemia. Now, first of all, coming to ECG changes in transmural ischemia. In transmural ischemia, ECG changes will go through certain phases. In each phase, there will be a different ECG. There will be initial hyperacute phase, then acute phase, after which there will be an evolving phase. Then there will be a fully evolved phase and at the end, there will be healed phase in which you see different ECG changes. Now, in the hyperacute phase in which there is initial blockage of these coronary vessels resulting in transmural ischemia, what you will see is that you will see peaked T waves and these peaked T waves will be symmetric. Remember, a normal T wave is always asymmetrical. A normal T wave is like this. It is asymmetrical. It is tilted on this side. But if the T wave is symmetrical, it is abnormal. And the initial phase will be a hyper acute T wave phase in which there will be tall peaked T waves and the T waves will be symmetric. Now, as the ischemia progresses, what will happen is that hyper acute phase will be converted to acute phase. In acute phase, there will be ST segment elevation. The T wave was already tall and now the ST segment is also coming upwards. That is the acute phase ST segment elevation. That was the tall T wave and look at the elevation of ST segment. Now what counts as an ST segment elevation, what you should do is that you should always look at the baseline that where the baseline is, where the PR segment is, where the P wave is and then compare it with the ST segment and greater than one millimeter above the border line. 1 millimeter is one small box. Greater than one small box above the borderline in two or more contiguous leads. This it should be in two or more leads and those leads should be contiguous. Now, what does contiguous mean? Contiguous means that the related leads. Now, if you are looking at inferior wall MI, you always look at 2-3 AVF. And in these 2-3 AVF, if you see that there is ST segment elevation, which is greater than one small box or greater than one millimeter, it makes sense that there is inferior wall infarction. If there is only ST segment elevation in one lead and the other leads are not affected, it means that, that there is no ischemia going on. But if there is ST segment elevation in two or more contiguous leads, the related leads that are showing a certain area of the heart, it means that there is some infarction going on. Now, after the acute phase, as the ischemia progresses, there is an evolving phase. In evolving phase, what happens is that this ST segment starts to go upward. 
the st segments will now appear like this and in this uh, the difference is that this t wave elevation will be now converted into t wave inversion the st segment will be elevated and t wave will be inverted so the t waves invert and the xt segment further elevates that is the evolving phase now till this period there is basically ischemia going on it does not mean that the heart tissue is dead there is no infarction right now how does infarction appear on the heart how does infarction appear on ecg how do you know that the, this is not ischemia anymore this is an infarction the tissue is dead for that you look at the q waves if the q waves are deep it means that it is a fully evolved phase and if there are pathological q waves it means that this is no more an ischemia this is an infarction the tissue is dead now now this pathological q waves these q wave actually get deeper with all these changes with all these st segment elevations and t wave inversions if you see this pathological q wave it means that the tissue is dead now this is a pathological q wave and now what counts as a deep q wave if it is for greater than 0.04 second 0.04 seconds is one small box if it is for more than one small box or what you can do is if you look at the r wave this is the r wave and if if it is more than one third of the r wave this is a pathological q wave and pathological q wave indicates infarction dead tissue now this fully evolved phase in which there are pathological q waves this is classical STEMI in which there is st segment elevation myocardial infarction where the tissue is dead now now after this fully evolved phase where the heart tissue is dead there is myocardial infarction now you cannot uh, put life into a dead tissue again this dead tissue will be there lifelong and what will indicate that there is a dead tissue present in the heart is this pathological q waves after years years after an mi all these changes will be reversed and one thing will always be there that will indicate that this patient had an mi that is the pathological q wave in the healed phase after years when the patient has gone through an mi patient has now fully recovered patient is fine now the single mark the single scar that an mi leaves on ecg is this q wave this pathological q waves will be there for lifelong even all the ecg changes have reversed to the normal position this shows the scar this shows the previous mi that is the pathological q wave now it is a summary slide where it shows all the phases initially there is t wave elevation hyperacute phase and then there is st segment elevation with peak t wave that is acute phase after that there is t wave inversion with st segment elevation that is evolving phase then there is a fully evolved phase in which there is a pathological q wave and after that everything reverses and the single marker the single memory of an mi pathological q wave stays there that shows the scar tissue now coming to the leads of the heart and what do these leads indicate which area do they indicate i have talked about it in detail in my first video but I'll briefly go through these leads again so that you have a revision that which lead indicates which part of the heart and whenever there is infarction of that part of the heart, you will see changes in those specific leads. Now, if you look the lead 2, 3 AVF, these 2, 3 AVF leads are looking at the heart from the inferior side. They are looking at the inferior aspect of the heart and whenever there is an inferior wall MI, you should always look at lead 2, AVF. This is the concept of contiguous leads that the leads that are related with each other if you see ST segment elevation in two or more leads it means that there is a myocardial infarction going on. Now 2, 3 AVF they will show inferior wall MI. Now those are all the hexaxial leads that are looking the heart in the horizontal plane from the sides from above from below these are the precordial leads v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 are the precordial leads they are looking at the heart from the front so the precordial leads are looking the heart at an horizontal plane and the hexaxial lead lead 1 2 3 avf avr avl they are looking from the sides from above from below in the vertical plane 
Now this is the horizontal cut section of the thoracic cavity. This is the heart. This is the uh, uh, spinal cord and look at lead V1, V2, lead V1 and V2 are directly looking at the septum of the heart. Therefore, these are called as septal leads. Lead V1, V2 are the septal leads. And whenever there is an a septal MI, you will look at V1 and V2. Look at V2, V3, V4, they are looking at the interior aspect of the heart. And whenever there is any ST segment elevation in lead V2, V3, V4, these are anterior wall MI. This indicates that there is an anterior wall myocardial infarction going on. So, if there is V1, V2 that is showing ST segment elevation, it's a septal MI. If V2, V3, V4 is showing ST segment elevation, it is an anterior wall MI. Now, look at V5, V6. V5, V6 are looking at the lateral aspect of the heart. Also include V4 in it. These all leads are looking at the lateral aspect of the heart. These are called as lateral leads. And if they show ST segment elevation, that's a lateral wall MI. Now, there are other leads in the hexaxial plane that are also looking at the lateral aspect of the heart. And those leads include lead 1, lead AVL. Lead 1, lead AVL is looking at the left aspect of the heart. Lead AVL is looking at the left aspect of the heart, the lateral aspect. Now, if you see changes in 1, AVL, it means they are showing the left lateral aspect. If you see V5, V6, it means that they are looking at the left lateral aspect of the heart. So, these leads are basically showing specific area of the heart. And that area, if there is myocardial infarction, that area will be represented by these leads. Now, if you want to go into detail of these leads, I have discussed these in detail in my first video. The link of that video is given in the description. So, lead 2, 3 AVF show inferior wall MI, lead V1, V2 show septal wall MI, lead V3, V4 show anterior wall MI, lead V5, V6, 1 AVL shows lateral wall MI. Now, this slide is very important. You must memorize these leads on your fingertips. And if you understand these leads, everything makes sense. It's so easy that these areas are represented by these very leads and we understood it by the previous slides. You must memorize these. Now, let's solve some ECGs. Whenever you have an ECG and you want to find ST segment elevation, you should always go through the lead systemically. You should never directly go for that there is an ST segment elevation in V2, V3, V4. What you should do is that you should go from lead 1 to lead V6 so that you do not miss out a single thing in the ECG. Always go in ECG in a systemic manner. That's the purpose of the six step method that we have learned in this ECG series. Now, if you look at lead 1, there is ST segment elevation. If you look at lead 2, there is actually ST segment depression. In lead 3, there is ST segment depression. Look at the baseline and look at the uh, ST segment. In AVR, we do not have anything. In lead AVL, look at the ST segment elevation. Lead AVF is showing ST segment depression. Lead V1 is showing ST segment elevation. Lead V2 is showing a very prominent ST segment elevation. Lead V3 is having an aggressive ST segment elevation. Look at lead V4. Look at lead V5. So, these are the leads. And if you look at lead V6, there is no such prominent ST segment elevation. So, we have ST segment elevation in lead 1, AVL, V2, V3, V4, V5. So now pause the video and recall which areas do these leads represent. Lead 1, lead AVL show the lateral aspect of the heart. Lead V5 also shows the left lateral aspect of the heart. V1, V2 show the septal part. V2, V3, V4 shows the anterior part. So, the comment on this ECG will be that there is an anterior lateral wall MI with septal involvement. This is very easy. Everything makes sense when you understand the concept of ECG. Now, pause the video and try to find out ST segment elevations. In this ECG, take a piece of paper and write down the leads in which you find ST segment elevation. And then recall that basic slide in which we said that which lead represents which area of the heart. And then you can easily find out that which area of the heart is having infarction. Very easy, very simple. Now coming to the answer. Lead 1 is not showing any ST segment elevation. Lead 
2 is showing ST segment elevation. Look at the baseline, look at the ST segment. Look at lead 3, lead 3 is also showing ST segment elevation. Look at the baseline, look at the ST segment. There is ST segment elevation over here. Look at AVR, there is no ST segment elevation. Lead AVL is actually showing ST segment depression. Lead AVF is having ST segment elevation. Look at lead V1, there is no ST segment elevation, no ST segment elevation in V2, no ST segment elevation in V3. Look at V4, look at the baseline and look at the ST segment. There is ST segment elevation over here. Look at V5, look at the baseline, look at the ST segment. There is ST segment elevation. So, there is ST segment elevation in 2, 3, AVF. And there is also ST segment elevation in V4, V5. Now, what does 2, 3, AVF represent? Which area do these leads indicate? And remember, recall, what do V4, V5 represent? Lead 2, 3, AVF show the inferior wall of the heart lead v5 v6 show the lateral aspect of the heart so the comment on this ecg is that there is an inferior wall myocardial infarction with lateral extension or you can simply write it as inferior lateral wall mi very simple very easy now pause the video and try to find out the leads in which there is st segment elevation Till the time you don't practice ECGs, you won't learn anything. You must practice all these ECGs. I have added these ECGs for your practice sake. So you pause the video and try to find out the ST segment elevations. Now coming to the answer, if you look at lead 1, there is no ST segment elevation. ST segment is normal. Look at lead 2. Lead 2 is having an ST segment elevation. Look at the baseline. Look at the ST segment. You must be also able to recognize that which phase of transmural ischemia this is. This is basically acute phase in which the ST segment has also started to go up with the peak T wave. So there is ST segment elevation in lead 2. Look at the lead 3. There is ST segment elevation in lead 3 as well. Look at AVL. We don't have any ST segment elevation in lead AVL. We actually have ST segment depression. Look at lead AVF. We have ST segment elevation over here. Look at lead V1. We do not have ST segment elevation. In V2, we ha actually have ST segment depression. In lead V3, we do not have ST segment elevation. In lead, in lead V4, we do not have any ST segment elevation. V5, V6, in V6, we have slight ST segment elevation. So, mainly in this ECG, lead 2, 3, AVF are affected. And there is somewhat lateral extension in the V5, V6 as well. So, the comment of this ECG will be inferior wall MI, inferior wall MI, and you can also say that there is somewhat uh, lateral extension of the inferior wall MI as well. But if you write inferior wall MI, that's also very correct because the prominent change is in the 2, 3 AVF. The, the ST segments are quite elevated. Now, you would be thinking that why I'm ignoring the ST segment depressions. Now, I'll talk about ST segment depressions. Basically, this is a reciprocal change in one AVL. Uh, in these one AVL leads, there is a reciprocal ST segment depression. What is reciprocal change? I'll talk about that in detail in my next video. So stay tuned and watch the next video. Now coming to the last ECG. In this last ECG, pause the video, try to find out the ST segment elevation leads. Coming to the answer in lead 1, we do not have any ST segment elevation. In lead 2, we do have an ST segment elevation with the T wave inversion. Now, which is this phase of ST segment elevation? You must be able to answer which phase of transmural ischemia is this phase of ST segment elevation. Let's go for the lead 3. Look at the pathological Q wave. This is a pathological Q wave. This is a pathological Q wave. There is ST segment elevation and there is a pathological Q wave which means that the tissue is dead now. AVR, we do not have any ST segment elevation. In AVL, we do not have any ST segment elevation. We actually have slight depression. In AVF, look at the AVF. There is ST segment elevation, there is baseline elevation and there is a pathological Q wave with T wave inversion. In V1, we do not have ST segment elevation, V2, nothing, V3, nothing, V4, we have T wave inversion. Now, I'll also talk about T wave inversion and subendocardial ischemia in detail in my next video. In this video, we are only talking about transmural ischemia. V5, V6, we do not have any changes like those. So, we have uh, infarction of the two 3 AVF lead. Now, this is actually an infarction, dead tissue. 2, 3 AVF in, indicate inferior leads, inferior wall MI. Now, in the next video, I'll be talking about subendocardial ischemia. 
and also i'll be also talking about this st segment depression what does this st segment depression indicates whenever there is st segment elevation in the presence of st segment elevation what does this st segment depression mean that's basically a reciprocal change what is the reciprocal change how do you identify it is it pathological is it normal do you, does it need any focus we'll talk about that in detail in our next video we'll We'll be also talking about T wave inversions in detail. What does that mean? We'll talk about subendocardial ischemia. So make sure to check out my next video. Before going into the summary, if you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button. We talked about what is ischemia, the types of ischemia, subendocardial ischemia, transmural ischemia, hyperacute T phase, acute phase, evolving phase, fully evolved phase with pathological Q waves, healed phase with pathological Q waves, and everything goes normal. The different phases of transmural ischemia what do these leads represent very important slide then at the end we solve ecgs if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on ecg interpretation made easy by six step method the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much